my name is Gianni, and I'm going to present to you the development of an adaptive learning system for teaching science. That is the project that I've been working on this summer. So first things first, I don't know what is like that, the slides, I'm sorry, but what is adaptive learning? So it is a type of learning where the students are given customized resource to address their specific learning needs. So think about a classroom. There is like 40 students and only one professor. Every one of these students learn a different way. So the professor needs to understand them and try to help them to learn the way they like the most. So the main purpose of adaptive learning is to generate a personalized experience for learning for the students. So nowadays, they are deeply, deeply related to delivering learning materials online to personalize the user experience. And when we say online, it's basically like virtual, digital content. It doesn't need to be online, actually. It can be offline, too. So Leonardo already talked a little bit about Agavi, but just to talk a little bit about it again, Agavi is a smartphone-based adaptive learning system being developed by Science Voice for use in low bandwidth, low electricity, and low-income areas. So the main goals of Agavi is being simple to use, so it doesn't require any like training before for the teachers to use or the students. It is designed to to use anywhere so you don't need to like have internet available you can just use offline as well we we want to build like a variability of building blocks so the professor the teacher can put like videos photos texts to help the student to learn better and actionable analytics. So we want like to see the analytics of the classroom of the students for it to help the professor to work with the with them. So what was learned during the summer? So while I was doing the project, I also learned uh, about some web technologies. I'm going to try to explain them very quickly. So one of the technologies we used is React.js, that is a framework using the JavaScript programming language. So just for you to understand what it does, instead of building a website page only in one big file, we can break this big file in a lot of components. So normally we will have a file for the header, slides, everything together. Using React, we can build in components so we can have like the header is a file. The slider is another file, and we can put them together. So it helps us to work with other people, and it also helps us to recycle components that we use. And we use it with TypeScript that help us to use React.js as well. I'm not going to get much into that, but it's good to know. So also Tailwind, the it helps us to stylize our page. And when we say stylize, it's like, for example, we have a text here that is red. So red is the style of this thing in the page. That is the hello world. So they wouldn't help us to stylize our page in a easier way. And we also use this library, the Shad CN UI, that has some React.js components ready to use, what help us to have a standard, in every page we are doing. And about the project management, um, I didn't work on the project alone. There is also Alex, that is one of his, his kind of mentor of mine in this project. And for us to work collaboratively, we use GitHub so we can put our code there and work together. We also use a kind of Scrum methodology to delivery. So at first he created the product backlog with all the tasks we would do in the project. And every two weeks we go on meetings to like divide those tasks between which, each other and show the results we got. And also for the communication, we have WhatsApp, Google Meet, and we used to do pair programming sessions as well, as well where we code together. And what is what was built? What is the results we have until now? So before getting to that, 
I want to explain what we want to achieve. What is our goal? So we want to build an MVP that is minimum viable product. So the product, the first version with only the most necessary functions that is not the full project yet is what we want to develop. And for that, we need the login system for the professor where he can log in, create his account and he reset his password if he forgot it. We also want to get data from the students or each activity they are going to do. So Leonardo is doing the analysis for that. We are going to display that in an interface to the professor. In this first version, the data is provided by lab. And we want to display this data in the dashboard for the, prof the professor, the teacher, that he aims to be simple to use. So, so far, what was implemented? The first thing we did was the login page and the register page, the forgot reset password page, and we did the header for the dashboard. And I'm going to show a little bit about it for you guys. So the first thing we have here is the login page. And there is something called responsiveness that we had to do on this project. So it means like we have this page and it's displayed like that in the laptop, but we don't want it to be ugly when we are using the phone. So it, it is displayed like this in the phone. So responsiveness is about, we can see this page in, the, in different devices with different sizes of screen and all the pages are responsible. So we also create the register page. In this page, I had to work with mood step form. So as you can see here in the video, we have a form that has one step. And when we you finish it, you go to the next step and it asks for you for more information. And it also, I also had to learn how to manipulate data in the React forms because you can go to the next step and then go back to the previous one and the data is still there. It, not, it does not get lost. And form validation as well. So we have a field that is for email. So if the person puts its name, his name, you can not, you say like, it's not a valid email. So you need to put your email. And also for the password. So we have the password and the confirmed password and they need to be the same or else you will not be able to create your account. And this is the reset password and forgot password page. They are really simple. So if you forgot your password, you can put your email here. It is going to send you an email. And in this email, you have a link to go to this page where you can put and confirm your new password. And this is the header. So the header is a call component with a lot of components inside it. So we have a component for the user. The video is not really working right now, but we have a component for the user. So if you click in this icon, it's going to show you some settings information. We also have this button that is prone for the alert. So you can put like on mute or you can put it to show you like alerts if there is something going on or some update in your activity. We have the search bar where the we can search for different stuff in the dashboard. So for like the professor, if he has a lot of information, he can search for what he wants. We have like the navigation buttons, so we can click on them to go to the previous page or to the next one. And we also have this button here. The, for now, we only have the header, but when you click it, it is going to display a side menu with more options. So we wanted this dashboard page to be really clean. So it doesn't have, a, it, will, it will not have a lot of stuff, but if you need more information, you can click here and it's going to display you more options in a sidebar. And about the responsiveness, when we go to the like to the cell phone, it's only going to display this button from the sidebar and the other options will be on this sidebar as well. And why is it important? So we want like we are developing the those pages though this platform to be simple to use. So we want it to be very clean, very directed. So you don't need to search or do trainings for, to use it. 
and we want it to be used any, anywhere, as we said before. So right now, we cannot use that offline, but we want in the future it to be used offline as well. And we wanted to have the actionable analytics. So it would have will it will help the professor to see what he needs to do better, where the learner is stuck, who has asked for help, what they have tried, and create a adaptive learning experience for them as well. So in Leonardo presentation, there was a question. So when is Agave going to be deployed? So for this first version, that is the MVP, we need to define the components for the dashboard. And for that, we need to like decide based on the analytics and what, is it, what are the informations that is most important for the teacher. And we need to implement them. And this is only the MVP. So it doesn't mean that our project is finished by that, but we can deploy that and keep working on the project until it reaches the final result that we want. So I hope it was easy to understand and easy to understand the project, the project and also what I said. And I want to thank you so much for the attention and also the program because I've learned so much. And thank you for Lev for being my supervisor and help me during the project. And that is it. Wonderful, great job, Gian. The clap's coming in and a hand is going up already. Sanjoy, go ahead and ask a question. Hi, Jenny. Thank you very much for this presentation. It was very understandable, and now I understand very well where Agavi is at. So thank you. And it's great to see it come to life. I've heard about it uh, for, a, for a long time now. Uh, my question is, what kind of philosophies are you implementing to make to ensure that it's low bandwidth? For example, are the analytics being done on the device as opposed to transmitting to a server? or what are you doing to minimize really the bandwidth aspect of it? Okay, uh, for now, we are only focused on the MVP. And for the MVP, right now, we are only doing the web page. So we didn't had we didn't talk too much about it yet because we are working on creating the dashboard. But as soon as we finish our MVP, that is this functions that we are focus, focusing right now, we want to like discuss the algorithms and what technologies we are going to use to make sure it's low bandwidth and also low energy powered. So like if you have your cell phone and you have an activity that you need to go outside, you can go outside, do it offline, and it's not going to get a lot of the battery of your cell phone. But right now we did this, didn't discuss it yet because we are working on the dashboard functionalities in the web page functionalities. Great, thank you.